Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Beacon Pines. Last time we left off, we were hanging out here in the treehouse with Rolo, getting ready to get started on an adventure. And uh, I had to replay a few things because uh, the game apparently saves at chapter start, but I did everything exactly the same as I did the last time, so no worries about that. We have everything, all our charms and all that, although, like I said, it saved at chapter start, so when I got to the town, so it's not like I could have missed anything, I just re-examined everything and talked to everyone. Oops, I didn't mean to leave. Oh, I can examine... Oh yeah, okay, so I didn't examine that. It's the one thing I missed, because we did do that last time, I remember. Luca looked up at the satellite dish. Rolo nearly killed himself putting that up into the tree. Oh, pull! While it didn't turn the radio into an interstellar communicator, as he'd hoped, it did at least boost the signal enough to overhear truckers one town over. Oh hey, that's neat. Okay, well, we're out of here. Because uh, I gotta go fishing with Dad some more now that I have pole as a card. Whoopsie. So there we go, there's our last one. Now I can see what happens if I finish off this. So, gimme. Luca tied a small magnet to the line, fishing with the law of attraction. Okay, gonna catch me some metal fish. Of course, we haven't caught any fish yet, so. I'm guessing the whole point of this is just to catch random junk, not uh, actually fish. Dad's gonna be so proud of me, though, when I pull in, like, a gold ingot. Or a key. Where do you think the lock is for this key? Now, oh, why would we want to do find that? Because then we can know the secret. Ah, uh, that's no fun. Second we know what it unlocks, it just becomes a boring old key. Right now, this key could unlock anything. Cool. If I catch your bait from the tackle box- wait, wait, there's more? I've already used all three types of bait. I thought something would happen. Oh. Um... I can't even cancel out of this menu. Huh. So can I- can I catch, like, new stuff by using- reusing some of the same bait? Maybe that's what the deal is. I thought I was gonna catch one of, like, each- like, uh, one with each, uh, type of thing. It had a check mark beside it. Showing that I'd have done it. Yeah, I'll be switched. Shrilled rubber duck, cried for days, yeah. Okay, so no, nothing changes there. Alright, let's just get out of here then. Interesting, interesting. I mean, I caught them all, so that's something. Alright, what's up, Rolo? Okay, what's this top secret plan to start our summer? So you know the abandoned warehouse by my place. The old Valentine building? Yeah, well, it isn't abandoned. Makes you think that. Get this. Last night it was glowing. Glowing? Are you sure? Kinda. That place has been empty since... Since the foul harvest? Yeah. We wouldn't even want to poke around that place. We would, Rolo. We would. Wait, 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 wait. It's just a busted old warehouse. I just meant we could do some research at the library. You want to actually go to the warehouse? What do you expect to find? Answers. My mom's out there somewhere, and it seems like everyone wants to pretend that she's done for good. You don't have to come, Rolo, if you don't want to. Loka, remember that time I sort of accidentally burned down the chicken coop, and you jumped in and said it was your fault before my paw throttled me? This is a flaming chicken coop sort of deal. <laughs> I've got your back. Thanks, Rolo. Now that I think about it, poking around a decrepit fertilizer warehouse is exactly how I wanted to spend the first day of summer. Let's go, gods. Deciding how you spend your days of summer. Huh. <sighs> Don't you just miss it. Alright, so... Yeah, we're going all the way over there. Anything changed over here? Do I need to re-talk to anyone? Doesn't seem like it. At least I have, it seems like, all the charms I can get right now. Yeah, I can't talk to any of you anymore. I can't examine the garbage. Alright. Hello. I'm just catching my breath a bit. Go on, I'll catch you up. So you gotta- you gotta pace yourself like me. Alrighty, so... Got Town Hall. Okay, can I- okay, I can examine this. Last Chance Diner. The Last Chance Diner. Hey, Miss Nil Nelson. Morning, Luca. Any big plans for the summer? Not really. Heard anything about the old fertilizer warehouse? Any strange happenings? Can't say I have. Either way, a dusty old warehouse is no place for a young boy. You'll be safe. you be safe now. Alrighty. What's this? Coffee? Luca could see the morning regulars nestled in their booths at the early bean. 
The Early Bean is a good name for a coffee house. Oh, this tree growing up the side is beautiful. Oh, hello! Um, Piper? Oh, hey, Luca, what's up? You know it's summer break, right? Of course! And it's, like, the morning? Correct! And you're studying? Like they say, the early bird gets the proper education required for a successful and fulfilling career late in the, later in life. Jeez, I almost made it. Mm-hmm. Well, you have fun with that. Hey, Zariel. Hiya, Luca. Could you please tell this lazy butt to help out in the cafe? Um... Lumi, Zariel, would like you... Luca, let me give you a little gem of advice. If you never do what you... If you never do what you don't love, then you'll never work a day in your life. Wow. You're really setting the kid up for success. Thank you, I appreciate these these words of wisdom. Hello. Miss Hatch could often be found near the fountain. Too absorbed in a book to be distracted. The two wandered down the wooden path, the wooded path, unaware of the danger ahead. Oh, oh, this is getting good. Oh yeah, is it? Well, hello. Holden Wilder ran the local paper of record, the Beacon Beacon. Hey, Mr. Wilder. Morning, Luca. What's the day you have in store for you? Was wondering if you heard any news about news. The Beacon Beacon knows the news that needs knowing. Any news about the old fertilizer warehouse? Nope. Oh. Rollo thought he saw some lights there last night. Hmm. Rollo ought to be careful poking around that part of town. Winds a change or blowing? Change is a dangerous animal. Change. Okay, wait, we do have more. I thought we were at the limit. Oh, it's scrolls. Of course it's scrolls. I thought, like... So the way I thought this was going to work is we were going to get six for, like, the first few chapters, and then it would change my charms, but no, it's scrolls. Oh, I should have known it's scrolls. Wait, so does that mean I can go back and fish some more with my new lure? Is change an option for the lure? I've got to find out, okay? I don't know what change would constitute as a lure, but no, 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 no. We don't need any, any of this. All right, can I just leave? I can't just leave. Dad's like, why'd you pick your bait and did just leave? Weirdo. <laughs> I am very suspicious of this Umbrella Corporation. I am not excited about that. Uh, alrighty, so this way? Up at dawn, newsstand. Hello. Hey, Dawn. Sorry to wake you. Uh, no problem. Comes with a job. Oh my god, you're adorable. Dawn had dreams of becoming a big time reporter. At night, she searched for the story that could be her big break. By day, she hawked papers at the newsstand. What's up? Rollo said he saw something outside going... Er, he saw something strange going on at the warehouse. You know anything about that? Hmm, you might say I've heard some things. I'm working on a story about it right now. So what's going on? Can't quite say yet. I still need to follow up on a few leads. Keep me in the loop, okay? Sure thing. Things seem to be quiet in town today. Yep, everyone is preparing for the festival. Should be back to normal tomorrow. Catch you then? Catch you then. Oh, and Luca? I'm really sorry I haven't been able to find out anything about your mom yet. I'm just grateful that you tried. I'm still keeping my ears up. Oh my god. The, the bat that works and sleeps out oh, is so adorable. There's last chance. Hmm, guessing Miss Fratelli is getting ready for the festival. Yeah, I really thought something was going to happen in the memory with Dad once I caught all three of the things. Like there would be some sort of reward, but it seemed like there was not. Unless, I don't know, I did something wrong somehow. Alright, let's go. So we've been down there, I can't go into Town Hall. Can I go into the Beacon Beacon? I don't think I can. And, okay, yep, yeah, we have all this down here. I don't recall all this being in the demo. No touching? I touched it. I touched it hard. Big watermelon. Hey Griffin, how's the ice cream go uh, gig going? Not great. Still pretty cold out, and I'm in the business of selling cold. Sure things will warm up soon. Mr. Tolliver is not at his grocery stand? He's prepping for the festival, I guess. Gotcha. Interesting. 
We have someone uh, missing. Of course, is that one of the characters we've talked to already? Mr. Tolliver. Hey, Bert. Hi, Luca. Doing some fact-checking for the town history exhibit. Look, kid, I'm just here to put up the lights. But did you know, when the town was founded, there were only seven citizens? And they all worked for a mining company? And there was only one dirt road leading to town? And there still is only one dirt road leading to town. Or, er, one road leading to town. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, boy. Alrighty. Well, let's go talk to Sally Acorn. Luca, just the fellow I was looking for. Hey, Roxy, what's up? Oh, right. Rendezvous with Roxy. This is an important turning point. Uh-oh. The first time where your charms will change the course of fate. And currently, we only have one suitable charm at our disposal. Have no fear, we can always return later using the Chronicle once we find more charms. Well, now I'm just rambling. Where were we? Have you seen my blockhead brother today? He skipped out before breakfast. Well... Not really, no. Can't say I have. Can't say or won't say. Roxy, when I lie to you... Luca! Wait up! I almost forgot to tell ya! Roxy might be lurking around here. This is one of her favorite places to stand around and be useless. Rollo. So we need to make sure she doesn't spot us. Rollo. Why are you turning, doing that turning thing with your body? Oh, you're not scared of you. Uh, you're not scared, are you? She's armless. And a chump. And she's right around that corner, isn't she? <laughs> it's been crossed off. Get into trouble with Rolo. Objective complete. Don't mind me. Just over here lurking uselessly. Oh, hey, hey, sis. Nice weather we're having, eh? Couldn't help but notice how you snuck out this morning before breakfast. Wasn't hungry. Also, couldn't help but notice your morning chores were left unchored. Roxy, I'm gonna level with you. I'm sick and tired of digging up carrots. We all gotta pick up the slack since the foul harvest. Almost every carrot I dig up is rotten. And the rest look like they were hit with Hank's Hank Atomic Shrink Array. All the more reason to keep on digging. There's gotta be more to life than puny carrots. Look, Roxy, Luca and I have places to be, so if you don't mind... Oh, I do mind. I'm not gonna catch hell again because of you. So either you march ho yourself home and harvest those carrots, or I haul you home myself. Ooh. Rollo froze as Roxy took a step toward him, cracking her knuckles. Luca knew he had one chance to save his friend from being dragged home. In the past, he found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little... chill. Interesting. So yeah, they keep talking about the foul harvests. I mean... I was thinking much darker terms, like people were being harvested or people died, but no, it's actually just that it was a bad harvest and small towns with a bunch of farmers usually don't do too well when uh, a lot of the money and funds that some of the people working have for that year is just gone because the harvest was bad. In the past, he found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little chill. Come on, Roxy. It's the first day of summer. The sun's shining, and we just want to take it easy. Oh, and lean against the- yeah! This leaves tomorrow's problems for tomorrow. That's great and all, but Rolo's uh, problems have a way of becoming my problems. And Pa always says tomorrow's work is best left for yesterday. March, you big oaf. Ah, oh, rats. I expect a full report about the Valentine place. A full report! Okay, well that didn't work out. Investigate the Valentine Warehouse alone. So, Fitz. What are you up to this lovely day? Nope. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> Just saying it out on the street corner, you're like, hey Fitz, and she's like, nope. Sharper Valentine, founder of Beacon Pines. Never underestimate what a great man can do given time. Sharper Valentine. Much, if you ask me. Ooh, I didn't expect you to pipe up. Indulgent. Okay, so that might be useful. So, yeah, I could probably go back to the Chronicle and try Indulgent at this point, but, uh, let's go to the thing alone and see what happens, yeah? Hey, Solomon. 
Apologies, no time for chit chat. Bye. Hello. Jeff's hardware closed down about a year ago. The effects of the foul harvest stretched wide. When there are no crops in the field, tractors don't need fixing. Yep. Starts to affect everything. Looks like the library hasn't opened yet. I'll check back later. Okay, library. Hello. Look at my boy. Hold up a tick. Oh, hey, Mr. Nuncreed. I was just on my way to... I just sold the last jar of your grandmother's preserves. Can't stock the shelves fast enough, turns out. Hey, that's great, but I'm actually... I guess Juniper will just have to swing by with more of her lovely jam. Uh-huh. Well, don't let this old man sew you down. You just remind her that she still owes me that dance. A promise Gran regretted the second it was made. Will do. She's a fine woman, that Juniper. Yeah, she's pretty cool, I guess. A real fine woman. <laughs> Why do you gotta be creepy? Uh, gotta go. <laughs> Sweeter than any jam on earth. Can you can you chill? Can you chill, friend? The phone booth was brand new, part of Perennial Harvest's Beacon Pines Reborn initiative. It didn't see much use. Yeah, makes sense. What a cute little town. Oh, hello. Oh, hey, Luca. Hey, Joey. How's the bug hunt going? Not great. Bugs have been shy this week. Bugs get shy? Well, sure, bugs aren't that different from people. Sometimes they just want to be left alone. If you're going into weep wood, just be careful where you step. No bug crunching. Got it. Alright, let me know if you find any tarantulas or scorpions. I still gotta fill in Blathers Museum. Even though neither a tarantula or a scorpion are considered a bug, I do believe. After the foul harvest destroyed their wealth and reputation, the Valentines shuttered off their estate from the rest of town. Yeah, so they probably gave people, like, bad fertilizer or something, or the fertilizer didn't work somehow, and it just totally screwed everything up. The Valentine Mansion loomed over every other building in town, both figuratively and literally. Crazy that someone can get this rich just off of making, uh, fertilizer. Oh my god, look, they have, like, a wizard's tower! I want one of those in my house someday. Just like a spiral staircase tower with like some bookcases at the top. Oh, the dream. The Valentines are living it. Is that wisteria on this tree? I think it is. Beautiful. Very, very beautiful. Can't go in there. Alright, so let's just go back this way then. I gotta get to another uh, checkpoint so the game actually saves. We gotta move. Alrighty. The path led into a small hollow at the edge of Weepwood. Okay, no turning back now. Caution, electrified fence. Is that sign new? The fence thrummed with a gentle electric buzz. Okay, so what would Rollo do if he was here? Luca often asked himself what Rollo would do. So that he could rule out that option. Definitely not touching that thing. I believe when I came here in the demo, uh, I had Rollo with me, so this is already different than what happened then. Uh, what am I supposed to be doing with this? Oh, are you saying throw it at the... Yeah, there you go. As sparks flew from the fence, the light atop that section shut off. Two bulbs remained. Ah, that's what we're doing. Okay, there you go. That's two. One more to go. Let's do it. Oh, oh wait, what happens if I throw the tin can? I've just been throwing the mushrooms, but okay, the it's still the same thing happens. Gave way to silence. Okay, moment of truth. Every kid in town knew the old Valentine Fertilizer Building. Long abandoned, the warehouse once served as the industrial heart of Beacon Pines. Now it stood only as a reminder of things left behind. The dormant building showed strange signs of life. Okay, so Rolo wasn't exaggerating for once. <laughs> oh god, jeez, random cough out of nowhere. What's going on in, on here? There was only one way to find out. Yeah, there certainly was only one way to find out. Anything else for me to examine around here? Probably examine the dumpster. Wow, that smells awful. Too bad Rolo's not here. He'd have no problem poking around in here. Uh, a hint for a future path. The hose 
hose emitted a subtle sound. It was actively draining some kind of liquid. And what are we draining into this water over here? Okay, interesting. Well, what happens if I... Best to get the warehouse alone. Locked. Luca thought he heard faint sounds coming from the other side of the door. He pressed his ear against the cold metal to hear better. A zipper? Footsteps. The sound of footsteps grew louder. Uh oh. Hello? Shit. Shit! Yes! <laughs> Perfect! Oh god. The steel door knocked Luca to the ground. Disoriented, he looked up to see an imposing figure silhouetted in a green glow. It lunged toward him. He tried to scramble away, but felt a gloved hand latch onto his ankle. Luca watched his fingernails leave trails in the dirt as the hand slowly dragged him back through the door into the lab, into the green light. This is a story about change. Uh-oh. So this is basically what happened in the demo. This was the end of the demo, as far as I recall. And I think I... I don't remember. Did I get caught or not? I thought I, I hid in the dumpster in the demo, but I had Rolo with me, so maybe that option would be available if I had Rolo. So we're gonna have to go back and get Rolo. But let's see what happens here. This is a story about change. It was far from the sort of change Luca imagined for himself. But change is, after all, a dangerous animal. As we were told. The end? I probably should have warned you about this. Yeah, I died. There are many paths that our story can take. Most will end in tragedy. But don't let that discourage you. We will find the ending that this story deserves. I just know it. From here on out, a charm will have a check mark when it's been used to its full potential at a given turning point. Now, let's try something different. Beautiful. Okay, Warehouse of Horrors, Rendezvous with Roxy. Oh, look at all the cute art! This art's great! Look at this. Alright, so shit. Yeah, okay, so no, I did do this in the demo, because I think I remember having shit, right? It's been a very long time. In the past, he found the best way to deal with Roxy and Rage was to be a little shit. In the past, he found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little shit. Yes. Make a break for it. What have you done? <laughs> ah! <laughs> That little shit just kicked me. Well, now you want, you little twerps. You gotta come home eventually. <laughs> just kick... <laughs> just kick you in the leg. Investigate the Valentine Warehouse with Rolo. Alright. Well, we did it. Do you say anything different? Sorry about that. Rolo can get overexcited sometimes. Solomon Valentine. Current ward of and future successor to the Valentine Fortune. Yeah, so that's your state back there. Huffed as he brushed off his pants. A town of complete and utter fools. One wonders if it's worth taking anything here seriously. Either way, I'm really sorry. No matter, how are you doing? Me? Yes, with all that business about your mother and whatnot. Oh, I'm getting by. Still no word from her at all? No. That is truly a shame. Shame. Your grandmother has taken residence to keep house. Yeah? And how is that going? They mostly stay out of each other's way. You make it sound like she's rarely at home. It's not like that. She just has a lot to do. Mm-hmm. She's still settling in and trying to figure out how to make ends meet. Indeed. Well, count your blessings. I'd bet it, it's better to have a caretaker who is rarely around, in lieu of one who tries to compensate by smothering you with attention. That doesn't sound so bad. Trust me when I say, it's best to rely on yourself. Family has a way of creating more problems than they solve. Yeesh. You don't seem like you're doing so hot. Solomon. Solomon trifled a gesture toward the approaching heiress, Valentine. Speak of the devil. 
Do not wander off like that. I'm much too busy to be looking all over for you. Apologies, Eris. I was just taking a stroll through town. Strolls are for commoners. You're Valentine now. I want you to be present for the construction of the History Museum. The future of this town relies on its ability to remember our family's great past. Of course. Bye. Commoners. You're not royalty, you jackasses. You just happen to have a giant mansion. Oh, good my boy. Uh, sorry, Mr. Duncreed. Kinda in a hurry. Oh, okay, you just let me run by. Oh, boy's got too much of his father in him. Giving you an Eeyore voice. Oh, and I just run past you this time. I win. <clears throat> That'll help. Uh-huh. I. Am. The champion. We were racing? And that road get longer. If anything ever changes around here. It seems longer. You're just lightheaded from the run. You really need to pace yourself better next time. Yeah, I said that earlier. Not sure why I would take advice from second place. Has that sign always been there? Wait, what? Caution. Electrified fence. No, that's definitely new. Creepy. How are we gonna get around an electric fence? Don't worry, I've got this. Good job. Why'd you do that? Pa always says you can figure out what the plan was when you're done. Great, what now? Well, I did my part and established that touching the fence is bad. I'm sure you can handle it from here. I'll supervise. <laughs> from a safe distance. Thank you, Rolo. It's fantastic to have you here this time. Whoa, you're a genius. Cool. Dunzo. So we do have just game over paths, which I imagined was probably going to be the case. But yeah, it's going to be interesting to see all of those. I think that did it. Luca, you never fail to impress. Lego. All right, let's do this again. The windows of the old warehouse came into view. Rolo began to bounce excitedly. Check it out. Dang, Rolo, you weren't exaggerating for once. Was there ever any doubt? This definitely needs investigating. Good thing two ace detectives are on the case. This is bizarre. This is awesome. Rumble. Okay, I didn't get that last time. <clears throat> did you feel that? What, the excitement in the air? You bet your butt I did. Stomp around in the water. Check out this puddle. That's not normal. And this hose. Oh man, the door's locked. Try harder. Uh-oh. No dice, won't budge. Oh well. The dumpster's new, right? I bet it's got stuff in it. Can't really see what's in here. Who did all of this? My nose is itching. I think I smell some treasure. Are you sure that isn't the hazardous waste? Just help me get in. Hello. It would be my honor to throw you in the trash. <laughs> Investigate the warehouse with Rolo. Yeah. Come on, Lady Luck. So what's in there? Let's see. There's a squishy bag of squish. Wow. A good inch of stagnant sludge. Your natural habitat. Wait, hold the phone. Hold two phones. Check these bad boys out. Walkie-talkies, yeah. Are those... Walkie-talkies? Just like Hank Atomic Communicators. Do these actually work? Ground command to Hank Atomic. Hank, do you read me? Is this Hank Atomic? Ground command, you're coming in five by five. How, um... How are your vital readouts, Hank? It's getting a little stuffy in here. Requesting assistance for evac. Help is on the way. <laughs> a dorks? What dorks? Oh god. What was that? Someone's coming. Give me your hand. I'm trying, my hands are covered in squish! Scoot over, I'm coming in. Yeah, this is how the demo went. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember this is where I stopped. Okay. Intimidating. Uh, tell me you saw that? Dude, I don't know what I saw. 
He's coming back. Get down. Uh huh. Probably a body bag. Mm hmm. The boy sat petrified under the weight of the bag. Oh, God. Tell me that's not what I think it is. Luca, do you know what separates front of the mill detectives from ace detectives? A ridiculous hat? When the chips are down, ace detectives dig deeper for clues. Bruno felt around at the large sack which burdened them. Aha! He snapped off a tag from just within a small zipper opening in the bag. Was it a toe tag? Some sort of badge or something. What's it say? Bruno held the badge up to a faint shaft of light within the dumpster. Dr. Prescott, Deep Engineering. It's a name tag. Who would throw away a bag full of old slimy name tags? I think it's just one name tag and a bag full of something else. Okay, okay, okay. I think we should make a break for it. Stay calm. This is no time to panic. I'm not panicking. You're panicking. Rolo, calm down. You don't have to squeeze my hand so hard. Dude, I am not holding your hand. Quit messing around. What other slime-covered hand would be in here? Oh, no! That would be horrible! Ah! Uh, yep, about what I expected. Ah! Oh, God. Yep, it twitched. I'm beginning to see the benefits of your Run For Our Lives plan. Right, we've clearly established that I'm faster than you, so uh, I'll go first. Why not together? Flame and chicken coop, Luca. I'll make sure the coast is clear. After I go, count to a hundred. If you hear me yell, run. If you don't hear me yell, run. Actually, either way, haul ass. Rolo, I'll give you credit. You sure found an eventful way to start our summer. It's what I do. Well, here goes nothing. <clears throat> Luca sat oh, in God. the dark, tracking the sound of Rolo's footsteps as he ran. One, two, three... He pressed his ear to the dumpster wall, straining to hear Rollo's footsteps as they faded away. Fifteen? Sixteen? Seventeen? He tried not to think about the contents of the dumpster as he counted. Thirty-five? Thirty-six? Thirty-seven? The thick stench made it hard to breathe. Screw it, that's long enough! Luca carefully lifted the lid and peered out. Nothing. No sign of Rollo? No sign of the man in the yellow suit. Time to haul ass! Luca clambered from the dumpster, stumbling to his knees. He was up like a shot and running, sprinting toward home as fast as he could. Beacon Pines flew by, blurred by the tears that welled up in his eyes. He wouldn't remember getting home at all that night. Throwing his front door open, storming up the stairs to his room and surrendering to sleep almost as abruptly as he hit his pillow. Chapter 3 there we go, we got a save. Finding a friend. The next morning, it was quieter than usual at the breakfast table. I guess I can go ahead and end the episode off here, because like I said, it does it does end at chapter start. I, I'll guess we read this. Silverware and chewing interrupted the awkward silence. Alright, now that we're in here, I think I'll go ahead and end this episode off. So yeah, now we're totally caught up with everything that I remember from the demo. They threw out a body in the dumpster. Things are clearly not normal in Beacon Pines, and we're going to be figuring out what in the hell is happening. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode, and I'll see you next time for some more.